30 years ago, a green Oldsmobile station wagon pulled up to a sirloin stockade off of Southwest 74th in Oklahoma City. Three people got out and headed for the door, intent on leaving with cash. Once inside, the group herded six restaurant employees into a meat locker. Moments later, the sound of gunfire echoed through the restaurant. The group piled back into their car and peeled out of the parking lot with $1,200 in hand. When police arrived, only one employee was still alive, but died an hour later. But what I really remember to this very day is each body coming out one by one by one until all of the victims have been removed. And of course, you know, photographing each body as they came out. And at that time in my career, I was probably in my early 20s. Many of the victims, you know, were similar ages to me or maybe a little younger. And, and to just, you know, just be going to their job, doing what they do to earn some money, and then to be killed so violently and, and senselessly. It was just, it was, it certainly attracted everybody's attention. Detectives gathered fingerprints and searched for clues at the scene. Their search for answers would last for five months. Officials with OSBI received a tip from an anonymous caller claiming to have met the three suspected killers. He told investigators two of their names, Verna and Harold Stafford. Harold Stafford was killed in a motorcycle accident in Tulsa just a few days after the sirloin stockade slayings, but authorities found Verna in Chicago. Verna implicated her husband in the shooting deaths, and a nationwide manhunt for Roger Dale Stafford was underway. March 13, 1979. Chicago police arrested Roger Stafford at a YMCA, and he was sent back to Oklahoma the following day. Verna came to Oklahoma to testify against her estranged husband. She claimed Roger and his brother Harold started shooting when one restaurant employee started talking back. One week after the trial began, Roger Stafford was found guilty on six counts of first-degree murder. He was sentenced to die by lethal injection. Stafford and his attorney filed numerous appeals that prevented his death for nearly 17 years. He was executed July 2, 1995. There was a lot of animosity toward him and toward the system because of the time that he was on death row going through these various appeals. Even after his death, Stafford had one final comment. There was, uh, we found out a day or two later after the execution that uh, even from the grave, Roger Dale Stafford was sort of playing a practical joke of sorts on the state. He sent a $5 gift card to uh, the woman who's in charge of death penalty appeals for the Attorney General's office. Her name was Sandy Howard. He sent her a $5 gift card from Sirloin Stockade of all places. I believe it was from the Sirloin Stockade in McAllister. Uh, and it, it basically there was a note on the back of it that said something to the effect of, uh, congratulations, you have participated in the murder of an innocent man. Stafford's estranged wife, Verna, would later be sentenced to two consecutive life terms for her role in the Sirloin Stockade murders, as well as her role in another crime.